Welcome back to the KSR Football Podcast, back for season number eight on the KSR Podcast Airwaves. Drew Franklin, we've been doing this uh, a very long time. Very long time. I didn't think eight long. That kind of caught me off guard, but it has been a long time, and I, I'm glad we're back. I know we're getting a later start this season. You all have been busy with your own podcasts. And with Bahamas basketball and everything going on, it's been a grind. But I'm fired up to do another season of this. Love talking to you guys every week. It, it's It's gone through a few different iterations and forms, a few new looks. Um, but I'm Nick Roush, joined as always by Drew Franklin. Freddie Maggard's back. And this fall, Adam Luckett's going to be joining us. We're going to be on YouTube every Monday night at 7 p.m. as soon as the Mark Stoops show ends. Uh, starting next week, you can fire us up and hear our mm-hmm. takeaways from the recent game you can also always get us wherever you listen to your podcast apple Podcasts, spotify wherever it may be we appreciate you subscribing and we appreciate our good friends at justice dental for running it back and sponsoring the ksr podcast just visit one of their two locations they got one on blazer parkway and wellington way schedule an appointment online at justicedental.com or you can give them a call at 859 859- Five four three zero seven hundred. You can even send a text message to one of their free friendly team members at the same number. You can ask questions, make appointments, all sorts of stuff. So it's a great time to schedule your dental cleaning. Doc Thompson, Doctor Justice, and their team that they're going to give you great oral oral health in a comfortable environment. That you'll find Drew Franklin there. What once a week, twice a week? You're you're there all the time, Drew. I was there last week for almost three hours. I had to wear one of those guards that holds your mouth open. My jaw was killing me, but I like that as as I was doing that, Doctor Thompson kept asking me Kentucky football questions like I could answer, and he even told me he heard on the show that I had booked my hotel for Atlanta, and he booked the exact same hotel. So you got to love a dentist that's going to follow you to the SEC championship. I'm, I'm never leaving Justice Dental, even if they do put me in the chair for three hours at a time occasionally. I love it. I absolutely love it. We appreciate Justice Dental for sponsoring the KSR Football Podcast. And we're just happy to be back talking Kentucky football. Uh, Lucky we were at the Kroger football field yesterday for Mark Stoops' opening week press conference. And there was a sort of kind of first day of school vibe about it yeah i think everybody was kind of getting used to what the job was that day we had some just everybody kind of settling in um then we had some interesting you know um got a non-answer like we thought we would get um nick that what we were talking about coming in there um, the expected was still the expected right chris rodriguez jordan wright aren't playing on saturday um, and it sounds like that's going to be a week by week thing. So we'll just have to see how that all shakes out. Yeah, it, it was, uh, it was, uh, here's the depth chart, Freddie. Uh, we can't really say much more. And this is really all you're going to get for the time being. I'd like to say more, but I really can't at this point. So we do know that Kentucky will be without Chris Rodriguez and Jordan Wright this Saturday. Uh, it sounds like one, if not more, will return shortly thereafter. But we still don't have a lot of clarity on the situation. But there's no denying that Kentucky will miss both of those players. Yeah, I mean, everybody's saying that you can just play without Chris Rodriguez and everything's going to be okay because running back depth. That, that's not me. That's not what I'm thinking or saying because Rodriguez is rare. I mean, rarity is a uh, rarity and availability are two traits that you look for <laughs> in a in a prime time running back. Uh, what 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 I noticed about the depth chart was 15 freshmen mm-hmm. are going to play, uh, are on the two deep for Saturday. And then I think Drew tweeted something, and, and I started looking. Will Levis is the only returning starter at his position on offense with a new offensive coordinator. So a lot wow. of the season projections are based off this, in my opinion. Will Levis, you got to do it at quarterback. Two, Mark Stoops has earned our trust and proven he can win. And three, Brad White over there on defense. You know what you're going to get there. You're going to get a top five offense. But there is so much newness on that offense. Again, Will Levis is the only returning starter at his position. So, ten new starters at ten new roles. That's a lot of unknown for me. It makes me a little, little bit uncomfortable. Not about the outcome of the game, but just I want to see what, uh, how these players perform uh, under the lights, man. 
Yeah, I don't see how you project what Kentucky's offense is going to look like. How can you comfortably say, oh, they're going to go out and score 45 points this week? Um, there, There's going to be some obvious growing pains with this new group. It's just so many new moving moving parts. Um, I think for Kentucky, it's probably a good thing that we – it seemed like in camp the defense kind of ex- exceeded expectations. At least it did to me. Um, some of the stuff I've heard and, and some of the depth I think they have there on that side of the ball. But – Offensively, we just don't know um, what it's going to look like because what you had with Rodriguez, it was like, all right, if we're in trouble, we we need a possession here. All right, we're we're handing the ball to twenty four. He's going to fall forward. He's going to get us four, five, six, seven yards just to settle everything down. You don't really have that right now. Um, so a lot of a lot is on number seven's plate. Um, he's got to be good right away for Kentucky, and a lot is on I think Rich Gangarello's plate, making sure he's making things easier for the quarterback and easier for all these new pieces in the offense by scheming some stuff early up, some easy stuff early in the game just to give the team some confidence. Were, were you surprised, Drew, that the first person on that depth chart without Rodriguez was Cavassier Smoke? Absolutely shocked. I thought all through fall camp, my boy Smoke uh, – fifth-year player, longtime veteran that's had plenty of carries on this team. I thought he had just gotten behind newcomers and just thought he'd ride this one out sitting on the bench, to be honest. And then to see him at uh, RB1, A, I'm very excited for him to still have an opportunity and that he didn't get left behind. And then this morning, uh, Mike Golick Jr., who has a pretty big online presence, shared the clip of Smoke just leveling that, uh, I guess it was a Florida defender, I'm not sure who, just on a, on a screen last year to set up a big play. And it got me even more fired up for smoke. So obviously they're going to miss Chris Rodriguez and we'll, they'll use Jefferson and we'll see some of the new guys, but to see smoke there at number one, I'm shocked and surprised and excited to see what he's going to do. I mean, during spring practice, like he was like fourth or fifth on the depth chart. And I, I, I just thought the writing was on the wall. I was actually shocked that he wasn't in the transfer portal. Yeah. And instead of doing what most do in this situation, yeah, it actually sounds like he's responded to the challenges that the coaches put on him, and now he has an opportunity yeah. to prove that he's the guy that we thought he could be back when he was busting off big play after big play after big play back in 2019. Yeah, availability is a trait, right? Like, it's a skill, like Freddie mentioned. I think that was kind of the thing with Smoke, um, being, you know, being getting banged up and being available all the time. It sounds like he's been available all throughout fall camp and – that's been a value, and I think he's taken advantage of an opportunity here in the last two weeks with the Rodriguez news. Um, Lavelle Wright was wearing a red jersey at the last practice we were at. And then uh, then obviously offensive familiarity here. I think he's he's getting the first crack, right? But it's not going to be – this is not just – they're not giving him 25 touches on Saturday. I don't think this is the plan. They're going to have a healthy rotation there. I think this is still probably a competition – that is ongoing, and so they're just gonna they're throwing throwing things out there to see what sticks. But smoke, I think, as a testament to him and the work he put in the fall camp, is going to get the first crack here on Saturday. And it, it, it's a great story, I think, for them, especially if it if he ends up being a you know real hit this year, fifth year player, waited his time, just grinded, and then got his opportunity. So now we get to see what he could potentially do with it. I love seeing the perks of our new YouTube setup here. I know a lot of people are listening to audio only, which, uh, hello, we appreciate you still listening. But if you're joining us by YouTube, our boy Trey, the producer, has dialed up the smoke clip. This is going to be fun having this all year. New visuals yeah. for the podcast. Yeah, and Smoke's a guy, I think he's ran for over 1,300 yards in his career. Like, this isn't just a regular backup. Like, he's played a lot of football. I think this will be our second career start. I believe he had a, a start in the COVID year when – Rodriguez had to miss a game. Um, so we'll have to see how this all shakes out, but it's a great opportunity um, for him. And it gives Levis another a veteran in that in that lineup when he's sur- seemingly surrounded by a bunch of freshmen, most notably at left guard, left tackle. The the thing about the running backs, too, is it, it feels like there's five of them you could put in. You feel pretty good about them. But they only listed Smoke in Ramon Jefferson. And then outside of that, Freddie – in the tight end room, we've been wanting more tight ends, and there's six tight ends on the Kentucky chart. It's, it's, it's the opposite of the running. I think it's safe to say Kentucky is going to use the tight ends more. Well, like I mentioned, we don't know what the offense is going to look like. By God, there's going to be enough tight ends to, for, for all of us out there on the football field Saturday. Yeah, <clears throat> tight ends are normally trustworthy players. 
on offense. And uh, the Kentucky's opponent, Miami, out of the MAC, projected to go to the championship game, right? One of the top teams in that league. With MAC teams, you get you get personnel in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. So when Mark Stoops says that Miami, that Kentucky is going to have to beat Miami, and 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 Miami's not going to beat themselves, that's that's absolutely true because uh, Miami's extremely well coached. I know that's a, a coaching cliche that people don't like to hear, but they are. And, and they act, they're going to execute. They got Gabbert, the quarterback, who, who can who can go. So uh, going back to the offense, I mean, you have those trusty tight ends. Um, if there's a position group that, that, in my opinion, that that you can rely on, it's that group, you know, with the projection of Dingle, Isaiah uh, uh, Cummings is coming back, and he's experienced. Brendan Bates, very experienced. And Keaton Upshaw. So, yes, I, I, I expect to see multiple tight end groupings, personnel, and uh, the can because Kentucky, with all those rookies and newcomers all over the place, you want to rely on what you think you can do best, and I think that is having multiple tight ends, getting the football to them, and letting them set the edge, which could protect those vulnerable tackles, right? Uh, One of my keys is how many chips are we going to see in this game? How how many times are the tackles going to need help in pass blocking? Now, that that, that, a creative coordinator – can scheme around not having the elite tackles. But I want to see how many times Kentucky has to match protect and chip with running backs and tight ends on those tackles because I mean, they're, they're new. We, we don't know what's going to, what we're going to see, but uh, that, that's one thing I'm going to be looking for Saturday. Yeah, I think that's going to be a lot because Miami, Ohio ranked top 10 nationally in tackles for loss last season. Yeah. So that's not that's just not their front four just creating a lot of havoc. That's bringing numbers. Right. Um, that's forcing the issue on defense. So, how do you how do you absorb that? A lot of twelve personnel, right? You get in twelve personnel, you create create an extra gap in the run game on both sides, um, and you help out those guys, and you try to catch them when they're in, when they're trying to bring heat with an extra protector, and then you take your your chances with a matchup on the outside. So, I think that's what you're going to see um, on Saturday, and I think a lot through the year that Kentucky is not going to get an empty a lot and. Let Will Levis try to pick apart defenses. I think that a lot of it's going to be establishing the run and then hitting shot plays off play action. Um, and with that comes extra protection for those tackles. Um, and really what big thing I want to see here is kind of like that off- offensive line, just as a group, can they really kind of empower them, uh, power over, mow over this group, um, even with all these moving parts? Just what do they look like as a unit? Um, because if we're going to learn pretty quick what they have there, you know, with a week two trip to Florida. So seeing them play well, I think it's a big, a big focus point for me personally this week. We, we, we mentioned the youth uh, right off the top. Um, and Freddie, the one guy who might still be starting in the same position just depends on his health. Kenneth Horsey got dinged up uh, during training camp. He'll be fine. He's a starter if he's healthy. If not, Jagger Burton, I think he was, uh, Zach Yenzer told you on your Leach Report weekly, you're, you're back at uh, – where, where do y'all do the show at? Uh, we've not found a new home yet. So we, I oh, yeah. up for grabs. Okay, grabs. okay. So, so if you're so, listening, we, yeah. they need a home. So get, come on, slide in those DMs. Where are you at? Yeah, get, yeah. get – Freddie's DMs are pre-trip. open. But Zach Yenzer told you that Jagger had as good a camp as anybody. Yeah, uh, and and that's the thing too, Freddie. When you look at you mentioned fifteen young freshmen, a lot of those guys have been here for a year or for spring. Like it feels like Dane Key has been on the football team for a while, but we haven't seen him in a game yet. And it's because a lot of these guys that are in starting roles have actually been on campus for a while. It's just this will be their first time seeing the bright lights. And you know, Freddie, I'm sure your first time seeing the bright lights. There is a a play or two that takes you to kind of get acclimated with the speed of the game and just kind of get into to, to make things feel like normal for the lack of a better term. Yeah, no, first first game of the year. I mean, uh, for me, I'm happy that it's at night. Night games are different at Kroger Field. Uh, day games, I think there's a little bit more nerves. Night games, you know, it, it's, you get all day to think about it, but it's finally there. And, and I like the fact that there's so many newcomers, so many rookies that they're going to go against a fundamentally sound team that's not going to schematically or 
uh, structurally be as bad as, say, Louisville. I mean, completely out of, <laughs> out of alignment. You know, th- these guys are going to do what they're supposed to. Now, Kentucky will win the football game because of better personnel, but you're going to have to beat Miami of Ohio. They're not going to beat themselves. But Jagger, uh, I've heard from many people that he had the best camp of, of the offensive linemen, and, and the sky's the limit there. But the second year, the redshirt freshman offensive linemen, we don't know. Jagger, David Wallabaugh, uh, et cetera, to a large extent, Jeremy Flax, because the Kentucky offensive line coach from last year didn't rotate those guys. So, that you know, it puts Kentucky into a, a tough situation. I'm interested. I, I want to see that first drive to see uh, uh, how Scangarello, the operation of play calling from, from Rich Scangarello, just to see if I can get in his head a little bit. Uh, but, you know, because without Rodriguez, that, that's your safety blanket's gone out the door. We'll have to get a little creative and, and see how see how he attacks that. But I'm excited to watch Jagger and Wallabaugh. Keontae Goodwin's going to get some run down to uh, Buford. Jeremy Flax attack. I think interior-wise, Kentucky's okay, even without Kenneth, Kenneth Horsey, who is an all-SEC performer. Uh, Eli Cox, the center, want to see him. I've heard from a lot of people that he could be the best best center out of this Stoops era. Got to see that. Tayshawn Manning, another player we've yeah. heard a lot about, seeing him in wrestling events with Drew. I want to see him on the football field. Big difference. I mean, it's, it's time to play. And, and that's, that's where we are with those guys. So, yeah, I want to see – I want to see the, the offensive linemen and uh, how they operate. Freddie mentioned um, our former offensive line coach at Kentucky. I won't say his name because Nick Saban can't even say his name and he's on his staff. Obviously, that didn't work out very well. And we'll see what happens with this offensive line once they start playing. But just in the few open practices we've been allowed in and the few interviews we've had with Yenzer, I love that guy. And Drake Jackson uh, also helping out. Just watching him coach those guys up. Obviously, he has that Schlarman connection, which we want to get back to that and keep that bridge going from the Big Blue Walls origins. But I'm so excited to see what this line does with a coach who seems to actually be competent at his job and having Drake Jackson there, who's not that far removed from wearing that jersey and playing on that line. Um, Like I said, we'll see what happens on the field, but I love what we saw out of fall camp just from the new staff. Yeah, and – um. Do we see wide zone, right? Like, do we finally see this unveiled, and do they stick to it? Um, you have to think two guys from the 49ers, that they're going to really want to run this. Ramon Jefferson's one of the backs who's going to get a lot of carries. He's been in the system before. He's ran it. So what does that look like? Like, how does that look? Um, and then what can they do with the play-action game on off that and the boot stuff with Levis? So that's the thing I'm, I'm looking for. And then how do they react if they get off to a slow start on offense? I mean, I think that's absolutely in the cards um, with all these new new parts, just how do they how do they kind of manage that? And so it's very interesting to see. And then, obviously, we all want to see Levis kind of take that next step, level up. And to me, that's, you know, keeping the ball out of harm's way. Don't, don't have a lot of pass breakups or interceptions. Take what the defense gives you, and then show some accuracy when you do show when you do take your vertical shot. So, all of that is there's a lot there really with the offense, and we're going to learn a lot about yeah. this group. I think in the first three four weeks, um, we'll have a lot better idea. I think of this offense when we when the end of the September comes. But right now, we just don't know. We haven't seen a lot. It's a lot of new stuff. That one of their better players probably isn't playing in Kenneth Orsi. He might be their third best player on the offense. You know, Levis, Rodriguez, Horsey, I think that you could rank at the top three, and that's probably it. And they're not going to have two of them on Saturday, it's looking like. So um, what does that all look like? You know, if they can, if they survive this and look good, then you get really excited because then you're going to get those guys back eventually, and then you're going to be at full strength going into the meat of your schedule. Um, so I'm also is, curious, like, to unpack. like how much will Rich Gangarello use the X's versus the O's? <laughs> I mean, that's a great video. It, who's to say? Who's to know? I genuinely did not know when Maggie tweeted out the picture of great to have interview with Coach Rich Gangarella. I didn't realize it till the day after that it was not him. I, I was <laughs> like, no wonder that dude's got nominated for Emmy. Great acting. Uh, one of the fun, like, I, 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 we like to think that we are the best content creators and that some of the in house stuff, you know, you get. 
you get Shane Beamer when you get some in-house people cooking up stuff. But Steve Zahn playing Rich was outstanding. Like, give that dude all the awards. If he hadn't had the like the one or two guard haircut on the side, where it was just a little bit shorter than Scangarello keeps his, I think they're identical. It's just a little more blonde and a little more buzzed on the sides. But once he yeah. threw those glasses on and the UK uh, shirt that uh, Scangarello had on, that, that was that was pretty accurate. Mm-hmm. Also loved. Um, and I don't know if the coach loved it, but he says, I know you like to move around every year. <laughs> you know, it's because he gets he's been fired a few times. I thought that might have been a dig he didn't need to make there, but that was overall <laughs> a hilarious video. The the snap count too, like and another thing that I don't know how well the current players know Steve Zahn. Because like I'm I, I love Steve Zahn from Saving Silverman. And when they're doing the he yeah, like I'm just thinking of him doing yoga naked and <laughs> saving so so like I don't even know how well these guys know him. Come on, and- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, it, was, it was great. It was great. I just can't imagine what some of those guys were thinking in the hallway when they got some little dude who looks like Coach Rich telling them to shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Did Martez Thrower have any idea who Steve Zahn was? Not a chance. Yeah. Well, it, was, it was about four years ago Steve Zahn did something with the basketball team. And they had the video, Tyler Hero and Keldon Johnson were 15 minutes into an interview with him before they realized who it was. And then it was a diary, wimpy, diary of a wimpy kid, yeah. and they finally realized it. <laughs> but, I mean, they're older than this football team, and or a lot of them, and it took them 15 minutes of a conversation to realize it. So I'm going to guess not as many uh, – I don't know what he does currently. White Lotus, I don't know if we got a lot of those fans over there. I just thought he was I quality think, control coach. I watched the start of it, then, then I had to turn it off. I'm totally game week right now. I mean, I, goofiness is out for me. I mean, I, I want to see, I want to see football. I, I mean, I, that's just my mind frame right now. You know, I, I, th- I saw the beginning. I said that's going to be funny, and I was like, I'm out. I'm just, I'm ready to go. Man. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're crunching numbers. You're in the film room. Yeah, I, you're I, rock and roll. I'll um, watch it later. But to really serious, take- did you the drone video? Yeah, did you watch, watch the that, drone Freddy? video, Freddie? I watched the first 20 seconds and then that was it. I mean, it's crazy, man. I mean, I, I, I'm not nervous about this game. I mean, it's just the college football offseason is forever. Yes. And we're here and, and I'm here and my, I'm just, I'm ready. You know, I, I'm just ready. I, I'm tired of the talking. For some reason, talking season this year has just been uh, a little overwhelming for me. And Too much I, middle school drama. Yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? So, I, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> although I appreciate the video, and I have no clue how a camera can go through the glass, <laughs> but a little bit much for me this week. Well, to, to your Freddie, point, you Freddie, have, yeah. I think we all are excited. Like you said, this talking season has been unnecessary long. I, I feel like fall camp lasted longer than it normally does. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, I watched the videos and enjoyed them, but I just am so ready for them to actually kick the ball off. So we can quit all this guessing, predicting, bickering, everything that's been going on the last couple months. It all goes away once that ball is kicked off Saturday night. It was different, too, because you got to think, like, this really kind of started with, all right, Mark Stoops signs a contract extension. Will Will Levis gets in the draft ether and stays there all offseason. And it it never really slows down. Um, And then you get the the college football fade Will Levis in Kentucky. Um, and that was a storyline there for a long time. And then you go to Media Days, Kentucky second in the East, preseason top 25 for the first time in forever. Like this was an offseason unlike any other we've had in the past. Um, and I think everybody's kind of chomping at the bit to get ready to go here on Labor Day weekend. And so everybody's really, really excited. And, like, yeah, I think it's just been kind of exhausting a little bit, some of the offseason. Just feels like it's lasted forever. And, now, and then – some of the drama like we spoke about here that broke out late. So everybody's ready to go and ready to go see them play a Miami team. And really, I think you can make the argument this is probably the best group of five team they've played since 2016 Southern Miss. Now, this is a totally different situation than 2016 Kentucky, um, but they've played some stinkers here in the last few years. Central Michigan was terrible in 2018. New Mexico State and ULM were terrible last year. Didn't play anyone in 2020. Um, Toledo was solid, but that Toledo team ended up having a lot of injuries. They ended up having a bad year. So this is the best team they've played, I think, 
Um, and that with that comes some challenges in the first game of the season. So I'm just very interested to see how they handle all that. This game reminds me of the East Michigan game a few years back. Uh, I was very impressed with how well coached that team was. That's what I'm doing the sideline stuff. I walked around behind their bench and didn't have the, the large number of support staff, et cetera, and they were just organizing. It, it ended up having some dudes off that team uh, that went on to the NFL. So that, it reminds me of that a little bit, Adam. Uh, but I, I think Miami can play. Transfers, I mean, projecting them was just as hard as projecting Kentucky because the portal really took away a lot of their best defensive players. Got some yeah. additions, but, you know, only really thing you know, only real thing is hip, hip and hammer, the receiver, and then Gabbert, the quarterback. Those two dudes can play, and they're going to test that Kentucky defense. Uh, one thing I want to see, y'all, is uh, I, I want to see a sack, a quarterback sack, from a D tackle, nose tackle, or defensive end, because losing Josh Pascal over there, uh, that's tough. And 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 this this is going to be a new rotation. So I want to see some pressure, uh, some non non schematic pressure from that organic three. Uh, I think if you see that, then, then Kentucky will be in good shape, be able to drop into coverage, etc. But, uh, but I want to see the the pass rush from the from the from the up three defensive linemen. And without Jordan Ryan, you're going to get a lot of nickel instead of your base 3-4, which means J.J. Uh, Weaver in pass rushing situations. I'm curious, Freddie, you, you mentioned that, that natural three, though. You like the kind of the top six, but how do they fit in in certain spots? You know, we've heard a lot about the true freshman Dion Walker being really explosive. Uh, can you see him? and Ox, and Hayes, all three of those guys in pa certain pass rushing situations. I, this feels like a really good run-stuffing team. So you should be able to get in those, right? Like, I mean, you've got 17-year yeah. linebackers, with DeAndre Square and Jacquez Jones, who, like, they're going to be sound in their run gaps. Kentucky is going to be physical and fill up gaps at the point of attack. So – Let's let's get into some third and longs early on, and get that that toot that cold whistle out. We haven't heard the toot toot in a while. Let's let's bring that bad boy back out, and and let the cats pin their ears back in the trenches. Yeah, I, I think what Mark Stoops talked about, he he's going to harp on his team to not be heroes this Saturday. I, I think the defensive line is the focus there uh, because Walker, some other defensive linemen that that haven't played a lot. You get through fall camp and you see Miami of Ohio, you're thinking, man, I'm, I, I can get, you know, I'm going to get mine. Well, what you don't realize, and I hate to say continue this term, Miami of Ohio is extremely well coached. Those, that offensive line is going to be much better than they expected. And if those defensive linemen, those three, get out of their rush lanes and passing situations, then Miami could hurt Kentucky. With, with Miami is not – Traditionally, in the last year, a good red zone team as far as touchdowns. Another thing I want to see is Kentucky inside the red zone because the Cats dropped in that rating. Miami gets to the 20 a lot because it's a passing offense. Then don't score a lot of touchdowns. So I think you're going to see a lot of bend but don't break with this Kentucky defense. But uh, I think the front three, if you see them out of position, especially Walker in this first game, uh, conditions like that, you have a tendency to play hero ball, get outside your rush lane, try to get out to the quarterback when that's what the offense wants you to do, right? Get totally out, then they'll sneak something behind you. So uh, I want to see those three be productive on Saturday. Miami was six and six in the regular season last year, five and three, second in the division in the MAC East. They beat North Texas in the Frisco Bowl. Gotta love the Frisco Bowl, one of my favorite bowl games. Uh, Drew, have, can you name some famous Miami University alumni? Uh, well, isn't that where Big Ben went? That is Big Ben. Uh, That's an they used one? to serve Wally. the Roethlisberger, but that got yeah. kind of – Wally you're Zerbiak. Going to yeah, I almost led with Wally Zerbiak, but I didn't want Freddie to yell at me for naming a basketball player. Ooh, here's a fun one. Benjamin Harrison, 23rd president of the United States. Wow. Can you play football? Uh, probably not. Uh, weren't, weren't the Grudens from Miami? Miami is 
used to cradle be coaches. Cradle yeah. throw coaches, man. There's been a bunch of coaches come out of McVay, Miami. I believe, is Miami. Yeah. He was I have a, there. I have a list here, Nick, of guys that are coached at Miami, Ohio. Okay, hit me. From the early scouting report I wrote over the summer. Paul Brown, Woody Hayes, Eric Parsegian, Bo Schembechler, Bill Mallory, Jim Trestle, Ron Zook, Randy Harbaugh, or Randy Walker, excuse me, John Harbaugh, Gary Moeller, Dick Tomei, Terry Hepner, and Sean McVay have all spent time in Oxford at Miami, Ohio. That's a, that's a list. Yeah. That's, that's a they lot, all that's party a lot of to Brick Street, uh, <laughs> from town, which that place, that's, if you ever find yourself in Oxford, Ohio, just, just go on and take a gainer in there. You turn back the clocks. Is uh, I get them confused. Is Miami the one that does the green beer day, or is that Ohio where they like start drinking at 10 p.m. and drink through the night and keep drinking and keep drinking? See, that's Miami, and then Ohio and Athens they do Halloween. Halloween is their big thing. Okay. Which yeah, you know they're they're close to Cincinnati. Max schools have a good time. Um, Miami is a very pretty school. Though. I, I've fre- I frequented that campus a few times. Uh, Good place, a good place to get your ass kicked by Kentucky, which uh, the Red Hawks were the last team to ever be shut out by the Wildcats way back in 2009. Do you remember where that game was played, Freddie? Cincinnati. Yeah. The Chris Matthews scored a touchdown, 42 to nothing. Ah, uh, was that, that wasn't the first Joker Phillips game, was it? No, it was Rich Brooks still. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Atlanta uh, getting ready to watch Virginia Tech and Alabama. So oh, wow. Be, yeah. I had a knife pulled on me after the game. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few cold beers in Cincinnati that day. Yeah. I think uh, I think our driver, we left Lexington at maybe 3 a.m. with maybe some open containers, tailgated all day. You know, you get excited when you're going to Paul Brown to watch a not good Kentucky team. Well, they were actually decent versus uh, Miami. But that was uh, – Back before we were in the press box, that was one of my last hurrahs being a fan. That was a memorable trip. Are you going to bet this, Drew? Ooh. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, I think a minute ago you mentioned uh, Mac. Is, is it Mac Hippenhammer? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, was, just a few minutes ago I was on my Mac, and I went to my hip and got my wallet, and I absolutely <laughs> hammered the 16 and a half. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't find the 16 that's cheap, at places where we're allowed to gamble. Uh, you have price. to cross the river to get 16, but uh, I do mine on my bookie, AKS our sponsor, and uh, they had 16 and a half, and I am already locked and loaded on that. Yeah, fun you... fact I wrote about this on, on KSR this morning from like 12 15, which is right as Stoops was starting to talk, to 12 25, the line moved a point and a half. Uh, it shows you how nationally they took the news of Rodriguez being out. Around here, we all kind of knew that was coming, but right. clearly betters uh, learned that yesterday, and it moved a full point and a half in 30 minutes while Stoops was still at the podium. And, Nick, we've, is- been, we've been believers in, like, SP Plus in the past, like judging lines off that. You're going to have a seven-point difference, six to seven-point difference here. Like, SP is going to have Kentucky by 23, 24 points. Oh, so you're, get, you're, you're getting a cheap price here. Um if you like, if you believe, and it, I think a lot of it, there's going to be a public dog aspect to Miami because this news of Rodriguez, right? Well, Everybody's probably going to jump on it. They see good Mac team um, playing a Kentucky team without one of their best players, so let's jump on this. So you're going to get a cheap price here if you if you want to back the Cats. And that, Roush, you mentioned um, it being the last shutout, and uh, believe I don't know if it was Stoops' first year or yeah, it was his first game, right? He played him early early on, it was but his Kentucky first won. Win. Yeah, his yeah, first win was against Miami. Yeah, Kentucky won that one like 42-7. to seven. Obviously, those are different teams. But mm-hmm. um, with a football program that can sometimes let these non-conference foes hang around a little longer than they should, the history with Miami has been a blowout. So I'm, I'm definitely on that 16 and a half. The, 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 the part that is a little baffling is it's not like the Chris Rodriguez news. I mean, they've been talking about this since SEC media days, the uncertainty around Chris Rodriguez. That they just – Assume that he was going to all get taken care of. Like I, I, I I'm it's a lot of it's it. people are fading Kentucky. A lot of that's what I think. A lot of this is well, fine with me. Yeah. Fine fade, with me. fade, fade. I will take it to the bank, and we actually have another way for you to take it to the bank, and that's with our friends at Prize Picks. If you've never played Prize Picks before, you don't have to cross state lines, right, to, to be able to get in on the action. 
this is one of the best ways to watch your favorite team by playing daily fantasy with prize picks. Prize picks is the simplest form of real money, daily fantasy sports, and it pits you against the numbers. Whether you're a fantasy sports nut or a casual fan, just want to add a little excitement to the games. Prize picks is the perfect game for you. Uh, whether you're Kentucky, Alabama, Florida, Texas, 70% of the United States, you can get in on the action with prize picks. Download the app, use the promo code KSR, and you will get up to $100 in your first deposit match by our friends at prize picks. And how it works is you pick two to five players, you pick their over under. If the parlay hits, you win. It's a lot of fun. And here's the thing, too, Drew. It's not just for professional teams. You can do this with college players, right? You can pick Will Levis over yards. They don't have the Saturday games up yet when we're recording as of Tuesday. But I really like the Aiden O'Connell over 314 yards. Purdue's going to throw the hell out of that football Thursday night. And I also like JT Daniels, too. Uh, West Virginia. I really, really, really feeling good about those. Maybe fading Penn State as well. So do yourself a favor, download the Prize Picks app, use the promo code KSR, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you play Prize Picks with our friends at KSR. I've got a little over under for us. This game is that with Gabbard and, and that offense, they're never going to be out of it. So no. if Kentucky does roll up a lot of points offensively. Miami has the quarterback and receivers that can, you know, they're going to catch up, especially if Kentucky drops off and plays a lot of twos and threes. If the Cats get a big lead, Miami can come back and get that, you know, get that cover real quick. And so that would be one concern I'd have. Which they've been known to do under Stoops. But yeah. if you go by the 16 point spread in the 15 or 54 point total, that's a projected score, Kentucky 35 to. Miami, Ohio, 19. Over, under. It's Kentucky go over 35 or under 35 on offense. Before we move on from gambling, can I say one, one more thing about prize picks? Yeah, I got sure. beef with prize picks. <laughs> I know they're a sponsor, and I'm glad they sponsor. Oh, no. And I love how they're so unique. It, like, here in Kentucky, we can't, we can't do certain things that 47 other states get to do. So I love this fantasy aspect. But I'm pretty dang mad you have that awesome hat on right now. And I did not know prize picks hats existed. So we started this show. Is that a rope hat? I love rope hats. I oh, got one it's on. got a rope hat. All so right, much prize picks. Okay. Well, if you play, if you win enough money with prize picks, you can get yourself a hat, Drew. Um, All right. This is well, just okay, me I sucking think, up to get a hat. I think Kentucky can score over 35 points in this matchup, though. I really do. I uh, do, too. I do, too. Especially, like, the big play factor. Wide zone is boom or bust. But, like, Kentucky has boomer bust running backs with Cavassier Smoke, uh, Ramon Jefferson, and also Barry and Brown. He's going to do something crazy, right? Like, we're, we're going to get something ridiculous from him. It only takes three or four plays to get close to that 35 number uh, right off the bat. And I also feel like uh, we're going to have a couple good scripted drives with Levis marching down the field. So I, I, I feel like hitting that over 35 is, is certainly within reach. And, you know, if I'm if I'm playing this straight up uh, in a different book, it might be a what's well, UK covering and also going over the total. Yeah, I think when you – the challenges Miami, Ohio are with their offense and their quarterback um, and their receivers they have, a solid offensive line. But defensively, they lost a lot. Freddie mentioned it. Their three best defensive players are playing for Cincinnati, Virginia, and Kansas this year. Um, they only have three or four returning starters. The front seven was was gutted. They've got some transfers that are probably going to start. That is the weakness. So I think you could see maybe the it, the interesting play is you think Kentucky is off the slow start, maybe that first half under, and then you see them kind of pull away and flex their muscles late with, when some of that depth starts to take over. So that that is the what I could see um, Kentucky going over that. And I could I think you're probably going to see maybe a little bit more high, higher scoring game than. Um, maybe you're expecting because I do think Kentucky, once they get kind of set on the offense because of that explosiveness, like you mentioned, Nick, I think they could start to pull away. Uh, but yeah, interesting number there, I think, um, because we, we're expecting a slow start, but I wouldn't say a slow start is if you go out and score 45 points, I think everybody would come away from that game feeling pretty happy. I, I, I think they would be pretty pleased with the 
a big offensive onslaught. Hey, let's do some bold predictions, right? Like we, we've been talking all about this. I just want to know, uh, Fre Freddie, what is one thing we're going to see on Saturday? There's one thing you were like, I, I'm, I'm writing this down. Can't wait to watch it. I was, I was, I don't want to toot my own horn again, but toot, toot. Wondell Robinson scoring the first touchdown of last season felt like a gift. Do we have any other guarantees? Get out the hammer and just whomp. The first interception of the season will be by Drew Phillips. Oh, love that. That is spicy. Wow. Very yeah. spicy. I'm intrigued by Drew Phillips at Very nickel. Intrigued. Like, you throw it on that high school tape, and he is lighting dudes up. Yeah. Um, you go back and see what they did with Mike Edwards as kind of a blitzer and some stuff like that. I think he could be really good at that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very intrigued just to see him because that's an extra player you can put in the box that can bring some oomph. As yeah. A I mean, tackler. That was one of the things that jumped to me at the, at the off the depth curve because they had him at nickel. So I like wow. that. Get your best 11 on the field. And, and Stoop said last night that between him and Kedron Smith, you know, they're both going to be rotating <laughs> oh, a ton. <laughs> and we, we do have a picture pulled up of him facing off against his dad oh, Carlos, who, <laughs> who played against Freddie uh, or played with Freddie. You yeah. can you take it in that matchup, Freddie, right there. I'm taking Carlos all day long. <laughs> but Drew, but Drew can, he's going to play some regular corner. And as Stoop said on his call-in show, when they're a nickel, there'll be Alex Afari getting some first and second down reps, and then Phillips getting uh, more third down stuff where UK can get a little bit more exotic with some of their calls, having a more experienced player in there. So I, I like that bold prediction a lot, Freddie. Drew, do you got any bold, sizzling, spicy takes for us? I do, but I also want to add to Freddie's prediction. I think Phillips is very hungry after what happened to him last year. It's completely unfair. Last year could have been his breakout year. Had to sit out a lot with issues beyond his control. I think that's going to be pent up, and he's going to be ready to unleash uh, kind of a lost season for him last year. I know he played a little, but um, I, he got fell behind the eight ball a little bit, and sounds like he caught up in fall camp. So I love Freddie's pick, and for my pick, I'm going to piggyback something off you said something you said earlier. Not only is Barry on Brown going to make an entrance, but we're getting a punt return to the house from either him or Tavion Robinson. Ooh. Robinson being the starter there, but if Kentucky's up big enough, they'll, they'll throw uh, Barry on back to see what he can do. And one of the two of them are going to the house on a punt return. Wow. Shooting your shot. Shooting your shot. We got, got some playmakers back there. We miss our boy Charles Walker here on the football podcast, but the fair catching days are over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go to the tight end room for mine, and I know there were some people worried about – Wait, how's Isaiah Cummings fit in here? Like he's he's third, he's an or. Like what what's what's the deal? I'm not worried about him, but I also think that the fun stuff that they're going to use Isaiah Cummings for that's coming in week two. He's going to catch a touchdown pass in week two. This week, Jordan Dingle is catching a touchdown pass. Write it down. Jordan Dingle touchdown reception in the opening game of the 2022 Kentucky football season. He's the full package of four star talent from Bowling Green. I, I'm really looking forward to see what the former four-star recruit can do for the Wildcats this fall. To, to your point about Dingle, um, when he and his brother were, you know, in Bowling Green and growing up wherever they were, and one goes off to where do you go? Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, yeah, Georgia Tech. It? Yeah. Do you think they would have ever believed they would be listed as an or at fullback at Kentucky years later? We got we got Dingle or Dingle on the depth chart yesterday. I, they couldn't have seen that coming five, six years ago for their lives. But that we're going to love both Dingles this season. His name has jumped out during camp. I mean, every time I talk to folks around the program and, and people that watch practice, that's the one name that keeps coming out is Jordan Dingle. It, 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 he's, he is uh, poised for a breakout season, just put it that way. What can, what's your hot take for this Saturday's game? Her turnover margin be an emphasis point for Mark Stoops. You go back and look at last year, Kentucky only lost the turnover battle once in their last five games. Um, so they really kind of turned that around. I think you see that, but I think you see the takeaways. I think Kentucky goes plus three in the turnover margin on Saturday, and that's a big reason why they cover the spread. Very much looking forward to Saturday's game, but that's not the only 
big game on the schedule. It's going to be a rocking Kroger field for the seven o'clock kickoff. Arrive early. It's close to a sellout. So get there early. Go see the catwalk. Greet the Wildcats as they enter the stadium. Find you a nice parking spot. I had somebody ask me about parking spots. I don't I don't have great advice. But people do forget that you can park on Cooper Drive if you get there early enough. There's also some first come, first serve parking garages over there near the near the Johnson Center that are that are open as well. So uh, just keep that in mind, folks. Get there early. Have a great time. Uh, we can't wait to see you out there. But it's a full slate of week one games. And I'm the only part where I'm slightly disappointed, Freddie, is with the night kickoff, you don't get the like all of the TVs up with all of the great games at once. But there's there's a bunch of great games between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Which 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 one which matchup in particular are you looking forward to watching this weekend outside of Kentucky, Miami? First of all, I'm ready for it to start snowing and just be true fall. You know, I'm, I'm ready for, for that. Uh, the game I'm lo- most looking forward to this weekend is the uh, Kroger KSR game of the week between the Danville Admirals and the Bull County Rebels. It's a rivalry. Big rivalry game. Yeah, rivalry week for the Kroger KSR game. Town. 21 state championships between the two. But I can't College believe it's game, taken us three years to get there, but we finally made it. College game, uh, Utah and Florida. I want to see what Florida has because Utah is going to be very physical, uh, projected to win that uh, that league. So I want to see the the, the Utah Florida game. Yeah, and that that's a game too. Um, you know they can't hide any of their studies coaching staff. Florida's going to pull off all stops. Tradition, like if you go off trends, the SEC always. They, they, they romp in these these opening games against other Power 5 opponents. So this the circumstances are a lot different here, but it's going to be the swamp. That one I'm fascinated by. We'll, we'll probably have to second screen that up in the press box, uh, maybe watch a little bit later. Uh, that That's a big one. That's a big one. For me, uh, I would say, obviously, a lot of the Saturday, I won't get to digest live. Um, we'll be out out and about with with the people at Kroger Field. But, like, the Sunday night game on week one is literally my favorite – one of my favorite games to watch every year. Um, this – because it's just – you don't get to do that the rest of the year. It's the only time you get to sit down and watch college football on a Sunday night. And then you got the holiday the next day. Um, this year it's LSU, Florida State. Um, the losing fan base is going to be in a minor meltdown mode after the game. Um, both coaches need to, like – need a win to, like, score points in their fan base. So it's got all the ingredients of what will be a sloppy mess on a, on the field. Um, so give me LS – and it's LSU in New Orleans, so you're going to oh, have yeah. a lively crowd uh, there in the <laughs> Dome in New Orleans. So give me LSU, Florida State. I'm very excited about a close second backyard brawl being back. Yeah. And so on Thursday bad. night. So you get to see a good rivalry game on that Thursday night to start the season against two fan bases that hate each other and they haven't played in a while. Um, and then obviously with the Neil Brown aspect here too, a big game for him and JT Daniels and Keaton Slovis. That, that's an underrated storyline. Keaton Slovis replaced JT Daniels at USC. Now they're going head to head here a few years later. So that, that is a very intriguing game for me. Yeah, I'm loving well, like the backyard just- brawl and also Purdue, uh, Penn state on that Thursday night. Uh, uncle, uncle Jeff, he's good in this spot. The home dog, like, uh, it would be really fun to shove James Franklin into a locker. Uh, Luckett swooped in and took mine. I, I really want to watch that, not just because it's a good rivalry, but Neil Brown needs to have a big year. Obviously, mm-hmm. we're all big Neil Brown fans, and that would be a big win to start his season. In my other game, adding to that, also a former cat, go John, John Sumrall against Lane Kiffin. I'll be watching for that one. Obviously, mm-hmm. probably going to be a lopsided affair, but, I mean, I'm a Troy football fan. I got a couple T-shirts. I'll be uh, I'll be rooting for Troy uh, in that one. So, two former cats that I'll be watching closely, hoping they can get wins. Lane Lane might still have a grudge or two from that Josiah Hayes tweet from John Summerall. So I'm a little worried for a guy, but we'll, we'll be cheering him on. We also have Cincinnati, Arkansas could be a, a fun matchup. Yeah. As well as Georgia, Oregon, you've got the Dan Lanning uh, storyline, former Georgia defensive coordinator going to Oregon. Not sure what they have there, but I, I expect the dogs to win that one. So it's going to be an awesome opening week. We're just glad, like Freddie, you said it. Just get out of talking season, get to the real games. We got a nice sample with Scott Frost having a special teams error 
uh, to blow a lead. Like that, it was the most Nebraska Scott Frost thing ever. We got a little taste, but the full smorgasbord is getting rolled out this weekend. And I know everybody here at the KSR Football Podcast is fired up to watch all of the action. Absolutely, one hundred percent. It's here finally. Uh, but I, I think Drew said it earlier. I'm just exhausted from from the off season, talking season, and everything going on. I, I just want to see football. That, that's it. I'm ready. Yeah. For what me, added, it's, go ahead, Drew. What added to my excitement? Not that I can add much more. It's Kentucky kicking off is about all I think about. Um, there's someone I live with who thinks I should be wedding planning more, and I'll be looking at <laughs> spreadsheets. But my brain is just thinking, man, <laughs> Eli Cox is going to have a breakout year. But adding to that excitement that already exists is yesterday and in some of the other days when we get it to go over to practices and press conferences, seeing those tents already set up all over the parking yeah. lot where people have claimed their spots. When we drove by those, man, that made the hair stand up on my arms. I was so excited to get out there. Even though those are work days for us, we can't participate in too much of that. It's just cannot wait to get out there and see that scene on Saturday. And it appears that it's getting pretty close to a sellout. Yeah. So it's going to be a lively crowd at night. I haven't checked the weather yet, um, but hopefully we get some good weather and it's a fun night. For me, like this is one of my favorite weekends of the year. Why? Because it's the ultimate luck at Will House. It's college football five days in a row. Like it doesn't get any better than that, than this weekend for me. So this is one of my favorite weekends of the year. Back pre-KSR days, I was taking that Thursday and Friday off work. Like I was taking two PTO days and we were just – we were in – digesting it all here in my basement. Um, but the big question I have as we kind of get ready to sign off here are Georgia State and Syracuse Live Dogs. Do we need to invest in the fade Shane Beamer, fade Scott Satterfield principal right away? I'm, I'm, I would love to fade Shane Beamer. Although the, the, the Scott Satterfield one, though, I'm a little uh, – yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't fade Satterfield for Syracuse. I mean, it's Syracuse for crying out loud. Yeah, but the, 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 the line's like – Vegas is daring you to bet Louisville in that spread. They are just daring you to bet Louisville. They want they want the Louisville money. Like, I think Vegas feels very, very good about that Syracuse side, so I'm fascinated. Now, that doesn't always work out, but they win more than they lose, obviously. But, so I'm fascinated to see that game. And Georgia State is, State is sneaky. Like, they have really given teams a scare. They should have beat Auburn last year. They beat Tennessee a couple years ago. South Carolina, that's another team with a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that line's small. I mean, it's only a 13-point spread. So, um, those are the two games I'm going to – because there's always an ups, like a r random upset week one, right? So, that that is uh, – that's one I'll be keeping an eye on. We'll see one. I don't know if that'll be the one, but there will be a crazy upset. A, well, a quick update on Luckett's uh, weather question. According to our friends at weather.com, we are looking at 65 degrees at kickoff with a few clouds and light wind. Wow. Ooh, man. That's, wow. That's the football weather yeah. you were looking for, Freddie Magger. I mean, that's Ooh. a little quarter zip if you want to. Oh, yes. Oh, quarter zip and shorts. See, oh, man. And, and you got to – if you were thinking – if you're on the fence about the game – don't fiddle with the streaming stuff. Just buy a ticket and go. It's going to be beautiful football weather. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, can't wait. I'm excited. It, and the best part is, too, is if, you, if, you, if you're really enjoying this right now, we got more football talk coming throughout the week. Luck and I are going to have 11 personnel tomorrow. There's a new pick three on Thursday. And is free money back this week, too, Drew? If you find out, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, see. You, can, we'll you can, see you can only you can only ask so many times before you give up uh but <laughs> if you are going to see it you can watch it on the ksr youtube channel so subscribe big shout out to our sponsors at justice dental you can visit them at justicedental.com and our friends at price fix download the app use promo code ksr and come back and see us we'll be back here live on youtube Starting this Monday at 7 p.m. every Monday, even though it's Labor Day, we'll be your pre we'll be your preview show for Georgia Tech Clemson to get you fired up uh, for the final game of that holiday weekend. For Drew Franklin, Adam Luckett, Freddie Maggard, I'm Nick Roush. Go Cats and